So microservices are great, but should we be adopting it just because everyone else has been doing it? In this video, I'll walk you through on what are microservices, what are the key advantages of being in a microservices based architecture and understand how can we fence a particular microservice, right? So let's jump right into it. What are microservices? Microservices are small, autonomous and harmonic subsystems. Like you have a massive product, let's say an Instagram or a Facebook, that product is broken into sub problems and each problem is then handled by a particular microservice and that service is designed in a very optimal way to solve that problem. For example, a very standard break of a big product like let's say Amazon, Flipkart, Microsoft, Google and whatnot is typically like let's say you break it into an authentication service, a search service, an order service, a delivery service and a payment service. Right. So each of this service is specialized in solving that one problem really well. Right. And when all of them harmonically they come together, you, you, you from an outside view it looks like one big company, it looks like one big product that, that is serving you like for example Twitter. But within that there are a lot of microservices that are interacted on a regular basis to get your things done. For example, a recommendation service to render your feed or an authentication service to drive authentication. Right? But each one of them has this very small peculiar uh, set of properties and a set of problems that it solves and it solves them really well. So optimally when they all come together, the entire problem is solved in the most optimal way. Right. So that is a key idea behind microservices to give each one of them a very specific set of responsibilities and ensure that it solves it very well. Right? But why, why should we adopt or, or why should we go for microservices based architecture? So one major reason that why companies adopt microservices is because like when a company starts, it's, it's, it starts from a pure idea, then someone like one or two engineer quickly prototypes it and then, and then a small MVP is created for which someone is willing to pay for it. And then it becomes a full-fledged product. And once you know that it's a product and you have attained a product market fit, what would happen is the company would continue to add more features, more features to your product. And once it starts to add more features to the product, what happens is your code base grows over time. When your code base grows over time and now because there are lots of features, there will be lots of teams. Lots of teams, then all of them needs to coordinate on that one gigantic code base or in that one gigantic monolith. So, so that's where the problem lies. Where having to have so many people coordinate over one code base, just imagine how many merge conflicts would we get, how many deployment issues, like some team broke or added or, or introduced some bug into a code and everyone else is suffering from it. Or uh, let's say with respect to deployment, it will become a major choke point where, where, where one team is ready to ship while other is not. So the entire pipeline is blocked because it's just one, it's just one monolith. So when a company grows over time, when the team grows over time, this, when you just have one monolith to solve and you don't have microservices, it would reduce your overall product development velocity, right? Plus add so many blockers and whatnot into the scheme of things. So that's why companies adopt microservices to make them lean and fast. The second key reason is scaling becomes predictable. Now, if you have just one code base or one monolith to solve that problem, if you'd want to scale something that entire monolith is scaled, right? And once your code base grows beyond a certain limit, the amount of RAM it requires to run that one process is huge. Might not be the best way. So instead, what we do is when we break it into microservices, each service can scale independently. For example, search might be on 10 instances because it's a very computation heavy process or, or, or it's a very heavy with respect to finding out relevance and talking to other microservices and all. So it requires a larger set of instances to solve it. Authentication, because it is invoked on every single API call, would be scaled to let's say 20 instances. Right? And then payments, not so frequent, can work on just three. Right. So every service is independently scaled without having to know on what the overall scale is. Right. And because of this particular, like everyone is working in its own space, you get autonomous and isolation. So you are, like your service becomes autonomous or your team become autonomous and you get very nice isolation. For example, you own your own tech stack 
networking interface and protocols like a particular service needs a very high concurrency at a very low latency or 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 very low a memory footprint or an overhead so service might adopt golang using a mysql database while other services hey i am i i am a traditional thing or uh, and, and and my team has expertise in java let me build it in java but i want to use mongodb with it right because that use case is more suited for a no sql based database so here because of the autonomous nature of microservices every service gets to decide its own tech stack its own networking protocol and primarily what happens is they define their own contracts of communication so service a and service b would agree on a contract that hey like for example service a says hey i only understand http so service b if you want to talk to me talk in http with me right otherwise in a modern stack where where we, this might say ki hey the, where the service b says ki hey i only know tcp so create raw tcp connections and talk to me right so depending on what kind of problem a particular service is solving it can expose the corresponding set of contracts for other service to consume the data so every service is is autonomous it's it's uh, is basically autonomous and can and can take decisions on their own for the kind of uh, api contracts that they would want to adhere to right and you can change your code wherever you want and deploy whenever you want like with micro with with just monolith having just one code base to rule them all or having just one service to rule them all what would happen as i said where well, let's say if there are two teams team a and team b team a built an amazing feature they want to ship it but team b cannot ship because they have their changes partially merged into the main branch and they cannot ship it and, and so because they cannot ship it the entire deployment has to stall which what which is what reduces the overall velocity but here with microservices each service can deploy on its own time at its own convenience as soon as they are ready they can deploy that's a best advantage because it overall imp uh, it improves the overall development velocity of it right then fault tolerance this is one of the key reasons why why microservices work really well where if a particular service is down the entire product is not down right only that service is affected and maybe a few and maybe a few uh, peripheral service for example if let's say this is payment service and this is search service so service a is a payment service service b is a search service if search service is down only that search bar of that website is not working but everything else is actually functional so with microservices based architecture the key advantage you get is even in case of an outage of a service you might still have a partially working product which means that you, the overall experience of your end user is not drastically uh, it it basically does not drastically degrade in most cases your product would actually partially function right then the final and and a uh, uh, really interesting reason why microservices is because your upgrades become simpler like for example with time new technologies come in new frameworks come in new database come in and what not right so obviously something that was relevant 10 years back might not be relevant today so what you or your team might want to do is they would might want to evolve the service and and when they would want to evolve the service they might want to change the tech stack be it a better language be it a better database be it a better infrastructure and in order to do this seamlessly what happens is because each service is autonomous in itself they can upgrade transparently so long as they are adhering to the same api contracts so a service can move from java to golang without any other service getting to know about it so long as they expose the same set of api contracts that were exposed in java in golang so that is a key advantage where every service can now evolve independently ki hey today i made a decision ki hey mysql was the best database for me but now because mongodb is there let me just use mongodb for that right so they might want to change the database without having others team even affected a bit right so these are the main key reasons why people adopt or why companies adopt microservices or why in general if you would want to adopt why you should be adopting microservices right and coming to the final part of it how do we define or how do we fence a microservice by fencing what do we mean like we know that microservices needs to be small but small is a very subjective term 
it could just be one endpoint it could be one feature it could be a set of features but how how can we fence a microservice such that it it it's it's better for the it's 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 better for the overall velocity of a team or of a company so how small and this is not just with respect to a management perspective but also from an engineer's perspective when you are architecting it you also need to know ki when should i break things into microservices like what is that one fence of a microservice so the services when you are breaking it or when you are fencing it it cannot be too big because if it is too big it is the problem is same as the monolith right because you would have multiple teams coordinating on it and that and then the same set of problem coming but just at a smaller scale a problem would be there you it cannot be too small otherwise there would be so many inter team or inter service dependency like inter team as in when when you have when broken it into very small into into very small services and then you're communicating the first problem that would come in is is very costly inter service communication and secondly if each one of that uh sub component is handled by a separate team then inter team dependencies very 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 messy so a good start to breaking things into microservice is go feature wise so a feature so typically the way your organization is structured right so there would be teams that that would be looking at at a specific set of uh, uh features so that is a very good indicator on how you should be breaking it into microservices so for example there like if if we were to build uh let's say if you were to, were to build uh something like a netflix uh, or or maybe an amazon prime right so you might have one team taking care of live streaming you might have one team taking care of authentication you might have one team taking care of payments right so then each one becomes a microservice so there will be a live streaming microservice and authentication a payments a notification and delivery right so each one of them has its own set of responsibilities one team to look after it and obviously as you grow bigger and larger each one of them will break into a set of microservices for example someone just takes off pre payment flow a team takes care of post payment flow so then those two become to separate microservices right so a good indicator of that is the way your organization or the team is structured depending on which you would want to break your things into microservices in overall improving your development velocity right and as an engineer when you are starting to build or to break your monolith into microservices this is a very solid way to do way to go about it right but again remember each service of yours will have a lot of sub components it's not just it would be just one code base or one process to deal with there would be like for notification there would be like a notification worker or a notification ingester or a notification task scheduler and what not but all of them you can call them microservices but overall in a bigger picture notification becomes your big microservice and then you might have smaller components that are again between them they are working harmonically right so approaching it a uh, 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 fencing a microservice is purely subjective and it is always designed to optimize your overall development cycle right that is the key reason on why you would uh, why you broke your monolith into microservices in the first place so don't lose track of that right but a good head start good is going feature wise right amazing chalo that's it for this one i hope you learned something new about microservices uh, like it was obviously most of this thing are already there but just consolidating in one place and giving them a clear idea is what i intended out of this so yeah i hope it made sense a bit uh so if you guys like this video give this video a thumbs up if you guys like the channel give this channel a sub and i'll see you in the next one thanks a ton